In part 1 of this tutorial, we 3D modeled this Mandalorian helmet. And in this video, we're going to texture it. So let's go into Material Preview over here. And then let's also go into Material Properties to add in our first material. And what we want is to name this material uh, like Metal Material. And we want to assign this material to all the objects. I see that I assigned it on this one. So let's click on all the objects and then shift click on this object go over here and click on copy material to select it let's jump right into the shader editor so i'm going to split my screen in half like this and i'm going to do shader editor let's change the base color to be white let's make it a very metallic thing because it's a metallic object make the roughness go down like that and the base color darker it darker like this now obviously this helmet should not be this shiny all the way over the object so we want to change the roughness we want to control the roughness with a noise texture so press shift a and insert a noise texture now with the node wrangler add-on enabled click on the noise texture and press ctrl t to open up the texture coordinate and the mapping node and the only thing you have to change in this is that we change the texture coordinate from generated to object press ctrl shift and click on the node let's change some of the values in the noise texture let's change the scaling to 3.3 the detail to all the way up to 15 and the roughness almost one just a little bit like this we want to have a little bit more contrast in our noise now so we want to insert a color ramp now this color ramp, we're going to set it from linear to B-spline. And we're going to drag the black part to here so that we're getting this dark noise. Now that we have our roughness map, let's connect this with the roughness and connect the principal BSDF. And then we get this. Now you might be thinking, I don't see anything happening. Don't worry, trust the process. <laughs> because what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the value of this color ramp. So with a math node. Set this from add to multiply and make this a value of six. And then it looks way better. The next step is going to be to create dirt around each corner. So for example, over here and over here to make it a little bit, uh, maybe not dirt, but like rusty a bit or over here, for example, on these corners. And we're going to do that with some mathematic notes. So if we press shift A, we can first import a texture coordinate node but also a bevel node because we want to detect where those bevels are to get the bevel node work properly we want to go into render view mode and also we want to go into cycles to set to cycles and gpu compute and i also like to change the background to an environment texture let's open that up we have on the bevel we have a normal data and we also have normal data on the texture coordinate so let's connect that with the bevel and now we want to have the actual normal data. We want to subtract that from the bevel data. And we can do that with a vector math node. Set this from add to subtract and subtract the bevel from this. And now we're getting these bevels. In the bevel, we can change the samples to 16 to get a bit more detail. And the radius, we can set this to 0.09. Now it's still vector data. We want this to be like a mask, like black and white values. We can do that with another vector math node. Set this from add to length and then connect it and then we get this. We want to have a bit more control over the looks of this. So we're going to press shift A and search for a color ramp. Connect that over here. Let's set this from linear to B spline and put the black value a bit to the right. Yeah, kind of like that. Now we want to make it that everywhere where it's white, it's going to be noisy and not like this, this uniformly white that we have now. And we're going to do that with another noise texture. But instead of inserting a new noise texture, I'm just going to get these four notes and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate them over here. Now let's see for this noise texture, the color ramp, I'm going to make this go down like this. And I'm also going to click on this plus sign to insert another note and make this black as well so that we have a bit more control over the contrast of this thing. A bit like, like this. For this noise texture, let's also change the scaling to kind of like uh, 7.3 and the detail to nine and the roughness to like this. Yeah, like that. Now we want to mix these two together. We want to mix this with this and we can do that with a mix node. And the mix node, we want to have color B is going to be the bevel and the factor of this 
going to be this. Basically, what we're now doing is everywhere where the noise is white, it's going to be this part. And for the rest, it's going to be zero. And then you get this. Now, one problem that we're having is that on this corner, on the corners where two objects are colliding like this we don't have the bevel but we want that we want to have to have the effect over there as well and we can access that with an ambient occlusion mode so if you press shift a and search for ambient occlusion then that looks like this and then we're getting already this over here if you want to make this a little bit stronger you can add in a color ramp like this and for this color ramp we now have that on the bevel it's going to be black and the rest is going to be white but we want to have it reversed because the bevel was also reversed so we're going to put the white part over here like this so that we're having bevels over there as well now we want to combine this with the mask of the of the beveling so with this color ramp we want to combine that let me organize it a little bit better like this and we're going to combine this with a math node we want to set this on add because we want to add it together and now if you Put it like this, voila, there we have it. The add node is automatically connected with the mix, so we should have the effect over there as well. This effect that we've created, let's mix this with the noise that we created earlier in the video. And we're also going to do that with another math node, and we want to add the beveling to this, so that we're getting this mask. Put it a little bit like this, okay. Now this add node, we want to put that into the multiply node. So I'm going to disconnect this, connect this, and then we get something like this. And then you see around the corners, there is more roughness. Now what I think would be cool as well is to make the parts where it's more rough, so on the edges, to make that a different color, like a brownish color, like, like a rough, like a rusty color. So let's do that with another mix node. But instead of setting it on float, we want to set this on color color a we obviously want it to be this color so press ctrl c on this color then hover with your mouse over color a and press ctrl v let's make the vector we're going to make that this mix node like that oh sorry the vector and let's see what we have then we have this color b we want that to be a brownish color so let's make that kind of like brown like this yeah kind of like that this is going to be our new base color so let's put that over here and then we get dirt and you might want to play around with this value a little bit of the colors to make it look a little bit more appealing and what i found out was also a cool effect that you see on a lot of car materials if you press shift a you can insert a voronoi texture and for this voronoi texture let's add in a texture coordinate node set the object to the vector like this and if we then set the scaling factor from 5 to like 800, for example, then we're getting these small noises over here. And to make this look a little bit better, we can add in a color ramp and set the white part of this color ramp to be a darker color like this. And then we can also put them a little bit closer to each other to have a bit more contrast. And now we can add this to our roughness again. You put it over here. Let's add in another add node and put that over here and we're having just a little bit of a tiny touch which will make it look pretty cool also if you set the clear code to be one and the clear code roughness to be kind of like 0.1 that's also like a nice little touch to it now for the glasses we're going to make it very easy so we're going to click on the helmet go into the material properties and add in a new material slot by clicking on this plus over here Click on new and make this uh, like glasses for example let's assign this material to the glasses by going into edit mode go into face select mode as well and let's select the glasses like that and then also like this make sure that you've selected this part and from here we can click on the glasses material and click on assign then you see it looks a little bit weird that's because we also have to select one small edge more or one small loop of faces more and the easiest way to do that is by pressing ctrl plus to expand your selection by one layer and then click on assign again and then it looks quite good now to make the glasses look good i'm going to delete the principal bsdf and i'm just going to insert a glossy bsdf and for the roughness i'm going to set it a little bit lower to like point, point 0.1 for example and i'm going to set the color to be dark darker and maybe a little bit of 
a little bit of blue as well might look cool and by the way to create even more realism we can make it that we have actual ambient occlusion between the objects because right now we only have like the the dirty parts which is already looking cool but it would be cool if we also have the actual ambient occlusion so let's add in another ambient occlusion node over here in the metal material let's also add in a color ramp put that over here and we get this let's put this color ramp a little bit more like that so that we have more contrast and now we want to mix this with the base color so let's press shift d on this mix node and we want to multiply instead of mix by a factor of one the color a by color b and the difference is this so this was before and this is after i think that looks way better so congratulations to you now you know how to 3d model and texture mandalorian helmet in blender if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions you can comment them down below and i will answer them if you don't want to miss out on any future videos be sure to subscribe to the channel and with that being said i see you in the next one